Hello everyone. Welcome to educators.com. This is Surya, your Unix trainer. This session is about introduction to Unix. In this session, we discuss about what is Unix and its importance, when, where and how it was developed. We'll discuss about different Unix-like systems and Unix clones. We'll have a deep dive into Unix architecture and discuss about the kernel and its functionalities. And we also have a deep insight into the features of Unix. So before getting into Unix operating system, let's know uh, what is an operating system. In our day to day life, we come across many electronic devices like mobile phones, computers and PDS and many other things like tabs, etc, which has a hardware and a user interface to uh, talk with the hardware. So for example, let's consider our home desktop. We would like to store data to the disk. For example, I would like to copy movie from pen drive to the local disk. So how would my computer know to write that particular movie into some particular drive? And if I want to launch a uh, Google Chrome, so how would my hardware knows that to launch a particular Google Chrome only? If I want to uh, launch a uh, text, text file, so how would it know that to open the text file in the text, uh, text editor? So how would you, your operating system know to run all these things in parallel? So how would your hardware know to perform these specific operations? It is the operating system which acts as an interface between your computer hardware and the resources or we can say as a computer application. Operating system is the one which manages the hardware resources with the computer application. So operating system is the one which bridges the gap between your computer application and the hardware. There are different types of operating systems available based on the features it gives like RTOS, networking operating system, embedded operating system and here we look into operating systems which are mainly divided based on the user handling capability and uh, multitasking or single tasking capabilities. When a system can handle only one process at a time or uh, for example when it can do only one specific task at any particular time then it is called as a single tasking system for example uh, if you see uh, your PDA or like mobile system so when you are performing a call in earlier days so it can do only one action it can do only calling that particular person for example if you see in MS DOS if you are working on partic one particular task like opening a file or doing some action like deleting a user or creating a user it can do only one particular task then it can move to the next task or we can give the next task in a multitasking system you can perform n number of operations at any particular interval of time for example you can open a file uh, to read the documents or you can perform a copy of a operation you can browse and you can do perform downloads and all the things can perform at the same interval of time coming to the single user system in single user system only one one person can log in into the system at any particular interval of time that is if, for example if you are working on a windows system uh, like windows xp or windows 7 so you are working on some specific task and your friend wants to log in into that system so what will what would you do so you need to log out of that system and you need to give the system to the other person in order to, so it allows only one person to work on the system at any particular interval of the time Whereas in multi-user environment, n number of users can log into the system and work and perform different tasks particular to that particular user. For example, uh, I have been logged into this system from particular place and working on some particular tasks like copying files and uh, drive, going to the directories and copying the files. So some other person wants to work on the same system, he can log in from the other remote thing and he can work onto that system. So it will allow multiple users to log in at a single instance of time. Based on this, there are three different operating systems. The first one is single user and single tasking system. It al allows only one user and allows to perform only one task at any time. So in this MS-DOS and PDS comes into picture and next a single user system and a multitasking system. I mean it allows to log in only single user and it al allows you to perform multitasking that is you can perform n number of operations at any particular time so here a microsoft windows family comes into picture like microsoft xp 7 8 and next coming the most powerful one that is a multi-user environment and a multitasking operating system 
here uh, unix comes in comes under this category unix solaris linux centos ubuntu all this comes under this operating system category so here we can n number of users can perform n number of applications at any particular interval of time unix is a popular workstation or server side operating system uh, coming to that unix belongs to the family of multi user or multitasking operating system the story of unix has begun in mid 1960s when mit bell labs and general electric were trying to develop an innovative time sharing operating system called multic they were successful and there was an innovative product ready but what happened it has a complex design and huge structure so they did, they wanted to redesign it so so researchers of AT&T Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie and other developers has developed unix at bell labs in 1970s from the design of multics it is said that unix is one of the first operating systems to be written in higher level languages that is c and beauty of unix is that it is the first portable operating system unix systems have a modular design they, they also call it as a unix philosophy initially in the developing stages uh, unix was decided to be a, an internal uh, software at the bell system but due to its power and flexibility and due to its re reliable nature it was becoming more and more popular in bell system and they started to leasing out that is licensing the unix kernel this led to variety of uh, both academic and commercial variants of unix from vendors such as uh, sun microsystems microsoft university of california uh, berkeley software distribution this is called as berkeley software distribution we usually come across uh, unix clones and uh, unix like system in unix clones uh, the kernel of unix is used in their development and most of these operating systems are proprietary proprietary in the sense that these operating systems can be installed only on the hardware of the company hardware which is provided by the company which developed this operating system for example if you take uh, mainframe computers of ibm uh, a ax is developed that is a aix can be installed only on the hard proprietary hardware of ibm or the compatible I mean, ibm certified vendors which provide the hardware and in similar we have berkeley software distribution operating system which is a commercial one developed by uh, wind river for intel process and similar we have solaris which is developed by sun microsystems in order to serve web servers like a platform and next uh, true 64 is developed by Com compact to support alpha processor and we have many other things like irix for 3d visualization by sgi we also have free versions of unix though those are called as unix like operating systems uh, these are much similar to unix i mean almost similar to unix in all the features it offers and uh, almost all the commands will be same and will be of the same features it has all the same features it is a multi user and multitasking environment it also supports uh, networking these are also as reliable as the unix operating systems uh, linux is very famous among this i mean this is the most popular and for fastest growing unix like operating systems available in the market and we have different flavors of linux too like centos ubuntu which is famous among the desktop application and we have red, uh, red hat fedora and many other things and we also have a free version of berkeley software distribution that is free bsd uh, which is developed by university of california at berkeley and we also have an open bsd and uh, solaris is now available as a free version like with the tag name of free solaris and we have darwin which is very famous in apple of in apple computer for example mac operating system is the base for the mac operating system is darwin and which runs on a unix kernel unix has a simple and modular uh, architecture uh, if we consider the base of unix uh, is the hardware i mean the lowest level is the hardware this has all the components like center pro your central processing unit and your data disk and uh, other supporting hardware and on top of this the kernel is present kernel is a heart or the or we can say as a core component of unix operating system kernel is the one which enables your application to talk with the hardware or your command to talk with the hardware and all the processes which are done are interacted through the kernel to hardware 
in order to perform each and every specific task perfectly, Unix kernel has many subsystems like process management, scheduling management, and device management, file management, network management, memory management. So each and everything has a specific thing. For, for example, if you take process management, it takes responsibility of all the processing activities. And next you have device management in order to do uh, addition of a device or the removal of a device. You, if you want to mount a data disk or if you want to unmount a data disk, this will take care of it. And network management is the one which is responsible for all the networking related activities. Memory management is one which takes care of all the memory allocations and deallocations and uh, your storage activities. Uh, next file file management takes responsibility about the storage activities. And next you have uh, the interrupts from all the hardware devices are being handled by the kernel itself. In order to improve the re reliability, performance and uh, uh, you know the robustness of a uh, Unix operating system, uh, each subsystem of kernel will have the following features like concurrency, virtual memory, paging and uh, virtual file system. Concurrency is nothing but uh, the Unix as Unix is a uh, multi-processing system, multi-processing operating system, many processes run, should run concurrently in order to improve the performance. So subs each subsystem will take care of this as a principle uh, and goes on working with that. Next, it has a virtual memory concept. In this, I mean, user need not bother about uh, how much uh, space my application would take if we run. So virtual memory will take care of all the pro uh, memory allocations and deallocations and your RAM. Uh, RAM deallocation. Next, there is a concept of paging. This is used to reduce the external fragmentation. On top of uh, kernel, we have utilities layer. Utilities layer is nothing but here all the compilers or interpreters will be located, and uh, in, a, in addition to that, all the commands for your shell. And coming to the shell, what is shell and how we can do shell programming? We are going to look about this in detail in the next upcoming videos. So whenever you give a command in a Linux uh, terminal, so that command will be invoked from this utilities layer. It is located at utilities layer and it will communicate with the kernel and then with the hardware. I mean, your kernel will enable that command to talk with the hardware and give you the list of the things for which to complete your task. If you are writing a program that in a Python, C, C++, Java, so your program needs to be compiled or interpreted. So all the interpreters or compilers are located in this utilities layer. And on the top of the utilities layer, there is an application layer, or uh, you can call it as a, the layer where you can uh, install your applications. Or we, can, or we can simply say that all the user data is located in this layer. For example, if you are writing some text document, or if you are writing some programs, and you will store into some files, isn't it? So that files will be located in this uh, programs layer. Coming to the features of Unix, we'll discuss the many important uh, features here. Unix has a centralized operating system that is called as a kernel, and it is called as heart of operating heart of Unix operating system. This is the one which uh, manages all the system resources and system activities and all the processes. And uh, next, uh, coming to the multitasking. As we discussed, uh, Unix belongs to the multitasking and multi-user family. So multitasking, as in case of multitasking operating system, user can perform n number of operations at any particular interval of time. So we also need, sometimes we need to stop one process in middle. So we can interrupt a process, we can start a process at any particular interval of time, or we can schedule a particular process to start at some point of time. So all this can be done in Unix operating system. We also call, this is called as a thread management. So each and every process is treat, uh, has a thread. Unlike the unlike in Windows where uh, there will be separate uh, partitions and each partition we can have a n number of uh, folders at each level. So Unix has a uh, unique uh, file 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 system. This is a hierarchical file system. You can see as a tree like structure starting with root at the top. This root acts as the parent and later to that you can have a subdirectories and these subdirectories can have uh, uh, files and different types of subdirectories again but the root is the one which starts a 
family that is it acts as a parent and it can have children and it can has grandchildren in the way and the complete structure of uh, unix file system is discussed in the upcoming videos in complete details don't miss it and next the most important beautiful thing of unix is everything that is attached to unix is treated as a file system even a device even a printer or you are attaching a new uh, board uh, data board that is a hard disk or something it is treated as a file in unix unix also provides with many networking protocols like you can perform F ftps and sftps and you can also work with ssh which are all inbuilt in unix and we can also do many other networking activities like sending uh, emails to the operating system uh, how this happens and uh, how we can perform many other operations using networking protocols we can have a deep insight into them in the future videos unix is said to be the most uh, robust operating system it is said that uh, we can run a unix system uh, up and working and with high performance for years together without rebooting the system uh, that is it has a higher me uh, memory management capacity capacity and uh, you know it's a very high performance operating system for its re reliability, security, and robustness, it is mostly used in the server-side operating systems and in workstations and in most of the powerful supercomputers. Unix systems are said to be the most secure ones, and uh, and uh, unlike Windows, we don't need any antivirus. There is no concept of antivirus in Unix. The Unix systems are built with more security layers, and uh, with the new upcoming uh, improvements or we can say upgrade updates. Uh, all the fixes will be done and Unix is becoming more and more secure. Thank you. Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned for more information.